what's going on brothers and sisters um now these are my son's glasses so they're not my wife's but they i needed it to read but um i had went through some real heavy temptations and um probably a couple days ago and um the verse while i was going through it you know i i had opened my bible i forget how i had seen it um i keep a bible in my car for anything um uh but when i saw it i i um thought about it later and now you know it came to me so i just went online and printed it out um for copyright purposes i guess you know people own bibles which is out of my mind and profit off them which is beside me but these are out of the king james version don't want to violate any copyright laws that they have on scripture and that believe me I'm, I, I i love talking about that with anyone i will make a video on how i feel about copywriting a bible selling it profiting off it and then calling it the word of God. That would say whoever copy wrote it owns the word of God. And um, I'd like to see those people who own the word of God stand before the Lord and say, I own your word and sell it. Let me stop. But <clears throat> um, so this is how I felt while I was going through it. And um, I had posted a video on it, so I'm not going to go into it, but it was real heavy. Temptation, like I haven't had, um, I'm going on over, uh, over uh, going on a year of, no, I don't take medication, cough medicine, um, supplements. Um, well, actually, I was drinking vanilla shakes. I don't know, there might be a supplement in there, but I don't take um, anything. I remember when I first vowed to myself, I was just like, Noah, I'm putting all my health in God's hands. I will not go to the hospital for checkups. These are things we shouldn't even know. We shouldn't even know. So, um like this is how the Holy Spirit led me. So I don't go tell other people to take, I don't take Tylenol, nothing, vitamins. And I remember it was funny. I feel like the devil challenged me right away because I don't know if anyone's had a sinus infection before. But when I, I said, I said, you know what? Cause how can I pray to God to heal me of my problems and then go to a doctor and put it in man's hands again and then use all this technology and all this stuff that originally comes from the fallen angels, these advancements. You know, so I'm like, you know, not saying about anybody in those professions, but how do I pray to God to get rid of a headache? But then I take a Tylenol. It makes no sense. So that's just for me. That's how the Holy Spirit has disciplined me. I have not, um, I think about eight months ago was the last time. No, don't, don't quote me on it. I just don't like lying or exaggerating, but I'll say six to eight months, give or take. Um, I was going through anger issues and I had punched my TV. And I, I had to get stitches. I went there to get stitches, but told them I want no medication, nothing. Just stitch my hand up and go. Um, but I have not gone for nothing. I won't. I, I have issues that I don't talk about because I prayed to God to handle it. Um, but if you um, have heard any of my testimonies, you know, uh, I was in the street life, the drug life, everything like that. So um, <clears throat> I leave it all in God's hands, uh, nothing. And, but like I was saying, um, immediately after I did it, I wish my wife was here. She just left. I got a sinus infection and it hurt. But I, I was like, no, I will not. I'm walking through the store. I remember specifically one day I'm walking by sinus medication. I'm looking, my nose is hurting. And I was like, oh, I was like, no, because I prayed to God to heal it. You know, and I had everybody else like, oh, no, you're taking it too far. I know this is how the Holy Spirit's disciplined me. It disciplines me in different ways. I've had people say, well, that's not scriptural. Don't worry about it. Well, the Holy Spirit is outside. It can go outside the box, you know. So I don't take it. So I'm actually, you know, excited that I stuck to that. I don't even think about it no more. At first, it was hard. Every time I had a problem, um, I, you know, wanted to get medicine. But now I don't even think about it. nothing. Anything happens. I just don't go. I don't do it. I handle it myself um, and pray to God uh, to heal me. But, um, you know, um so this was while i was going through that temptation now i think these are my sons i have to get reading glasses because the appointment for to get my glasses is thing and then even then i've been struggling with that i'm like well my eyes see how god wants them to see he knows all but you know so i'm like 
Should I even be wearing glasses? But then I can't read at all. Some would say, well, you got to get the glasses, you got to get the scripture. But my whole thing with the Holy Spirit is stepping in the Holy Spirit. And believe me, I've done a lot of reading and stuff. So I don't know. I actually, for me personally, I just don't feel right every time I put glasses on. I really don't. And some would wiggle, you're taking it too far. But once again, I'm exactly how God knew I would be. So maybe my eyes didn't matter. So I, I don't know. But these, I think, are my sons. I think. But um, so this was going through my head through the temptation. I remember I had opened up my Bible and read it in the car. Don't quote me. It was an emotional day. Like I said, I don't like lying or exaggerating. Um, we're held accountable for everything. But um, this came up to me and I couldn't believe it. You know, it brought tears to my eyes. This is Psalms uh, 13, chapter 13 out of the King James Version. How long wilt thou forget me, Lord? O Lord. No, forget me, O Lord, forever. Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest mine enemy say I have prevailed against him. And thou that troubled me, rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt um, bountifully with me. So when I was reading it at the end, you see how it says rejoice. I didn't even want to hear that at the time because I just felt like he was allowing the enemy. Um, but he, he stood with me the whole time. No, guys. Um, um, yo, your, your mother has them. It says, can I please have the shed keys to get my bike? Your mom just left. So when she gets back, I'll get your bike off the shed. Um, but, um, so then, uh, this is when I first started reading the Bible, I think I, like I said, I got many Bibles. This one is new Testament, just new Testament and Psalms. It's a Gideon. Um, I have all kinds because at first I was trying to, you know, like I, I have a learning disability. So when I see a word, I remember when I started out, I didn't know what thou meant. So I just, instead of going to dictionaries and Greek meanings and stuff, I just used Bibles to interpret Bibles and the Holy Spirit when I started connecting with the Holy Spirit to bring truth to me. So if the King James Version said a word I didn't understand, I'd go to the NIV, read the same verse, get an understanding of the verse, go back to the King James, read it again, and I'd understand because... Uh, the NIV was easier to read, you know, so I would just do that instead of going asking somebody. I, I just learned on my own. But um, so this one now, this is amazing. So this is when actually, to be honest. No, was I now? This is what happened when I grew up as a kid. They were trying to teach us the books of the Bible. And when I was a kid, literally all I could remember and these books helped me so much. Genesis, and I always remembered Psalms because my mom was embarrassing in church. She was the one who would run around and speaking in tongues and they'd always call her up, Sis Sister Ramona, get up there, testify, because that's how my church was. If somebody broke out in the spirit, I don't care what the pastor was doing, <laughs> get up here, ha, let us hear the word. And they, they'd either do a testimony, something at any time. You know, I, I realized how much I wish I could go back to those days and really pay attention, but I learned what I needed to anytime. Somebody would break out, get up here. Then the pastor would speak on what they said or something. It would change the whole thing. It was amazing. But um, so in Sunday school, all I could remember was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I promise you. And that's so funny that now, that now I'm always deep on the Sermon on the Mount and the teachings of Jesus. It's the rock we should build on. And you can find those in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But <clears throat> after all the years and stuff, I remembered Psalms, Genesis. Genesis because it was the first book of the Bible. Psalms because my mom, every Sunday, I felt like she would embarrass us. And her testimony, she had prostitution in it. So we'd be in the front row like, oh, there goes my mom again. Some of the kids would be laughing. She's like, you know, doing drugs, prostitution, which is a very strong testimony. Um, and how God delivered her from it. 
but we'd be like, oh man, you know, all her five kids, we'd be hiding like under the pew. Like, <laughs> so, but um, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John songs in Genesis. And I just always remembered Revelations because it was then. That was it. Boom. You asked me any other book, I had no clue. So when the Lord had come to me in a jail cell, which I'll do that testimony again, but now the first time I did it on my other page that got deleted, it was so long. It was like an hour. And it was actually a personal thing to send to my brother Jacob. The Lord laid it on my heart to post it. So I posted it. But now that I've let it all out and most of the people I talk to know a little bit about me, I can break it up. But um, but yeah, so those books always stuck with me whenever I'd go to jail, a rehab, anything. I'd always just go to those books. You know, I didn't understand the historical side of the books or nothing. I would literally, you know, just seven years ago, if I was in jail, I'd be looking for like, say, uh, the Bible, right? I'd be looking for the story of Moses, you know, and I'm in the back. I, I had no clue, no direction. I'd be, I'd be back here like, you know, in Luke looking <laughs> for, uh, you know, the story of Joseph. You know what I mean? That's how... You know, and this was up 2017, up to that point, I was, I had no knowledge or understanding of where anything was. And uh, so, um, but uh, so this is what happened. I remember when I first, after the experience, when the Lord came to me and there was no denying him, um, I started going like, I don't know if you can see, but I started going through and highlighting things, right? That stood out to me. Um, I put like blue markings and I was trying to just just get an understanding. At the time, I was on probation, so I was looking for how am I supposed to deal with probation? You know what I mean? Because I had committed a crime, but they had charged me for something I didn't do, and I got found guilty. So I was going to – I didn't know if I should go to trial and try to beat it. But then at the same time, the Lord had come to me, so I did commit a crime. You know what I mean? So just because it was worse and then, you know, I'll testify on that. And it came to there's a lot of things in the streets or when I was in trouble that I got away with. So the fact that they overcharged me, I asked for forget it. It's it's a um, very deep um, testimony to that. What I had come to and you wouldn't believe. Well, I know people that watch this. If you took the time to watch this, you believe me. You wouldn't believe what verse popped up while I was in the jail cell trying to figure out if I should go to trial or not. I was in the hole. This is after Jesus Christ came to me. Uh, the truth, something about the truth cell sets you free and this, that, that. I was reading and I was like, boom. So I was like, wow. You know, and it was very powerful. And I just kept reading. But, you know, I highlighted. And then this is what happened. Boy, I love the book of James. So then I, you know, was reading a little bit and stuff like that. And for some reason, I had no clue who James was. As many years as I picked up a Bible, never saw the book of James. Don't remember no one talking about it when I was a kid. I'm sure they did. But I was reading it and, you know, highlighting and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I ended up almost highlighting the whole thing. Look at it. So I'm like, man, this is some, some powerful stuff. And then I remember I was so upset because it just ended. I was like, wait, I thought a page was missing. I'm like... No, this is so, ah, where'd it go? <laughs> Why'd he stop? And then when I had gotten out, um, I went through, I'm telling you, when I say four or five months of just straight YouTube from when I woke up to when I went to sleep. So I went down that rabbit hole, but I was trying to find someone I could learn from. I realized real early, you know, I was still going to my Bible. I was reading the Bible more then. Than I do now, which I got to do. But um, then I came across this and I'm tying this all together. Um, and it stuck with me. And, you know, later on, I realized that almost word for word, James, it's you can find all this in the Sermon on the Mount, the teachings of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. He just isolated them and wham, back to back, literally right out of Jesus's mouth. You know what I mean? And he just said it in his own way, but boom. And that's why I understand now Holy Spirit because I'm so connected to the teachings of Jesus. I love him, I have him in my heart and I can just, right now, quiz me on it. I don't know what would happen, but when the spirit of the Lord comes upon me and people ask questions and I take the time, I just, but um, so now after that verse that I read, 
um, Psalms 13 of the King James Version. That was going through my head. And I didn't want to hear the rejoice at the end because I felt like, you know, I was trying to give up. But then this, which I have highlighted. I don't have to open it again. And I don't know what stack of Bibles I got that. But this is out of the King James for copyright purposes. Don't want to get sued. I don't have much. Like, going to have my cat, I guess. Um, uh, King James Version. Uh, <clears throat> no, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. And literally, in the last couple months, when I go, was going through hard temptations and stuff, I would just read it. I would read it over and over and over and over again. Um, uh, and it was funny, after all that temptation happened, this Bible, I lost. I couldn't find it. I just found this last night where I had it highlighted. And it was funny because I read it so much months ago that I know where it is. So I found it in another Bible, came across it, and then... I, I just felt so good. Then I found it last night, helping my wife look for something because we just moved. I thought I left it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. I'll just put that there, I don't, that word right there. Not good at reading. Neither shadow of turning. So, <clears throat> um, this, uh, so that came after, and I just remember, I was like, boom. I was like, ah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I, I was so happy that I had, and it was funny because I wasn't even being tempted. Sometimes when I first read that, it just caught an eye on me, and I would read it over and over and over and over and over again. I'd go, the book of James was so short. Sometimes I'd read the whole thing. Sometimes I'd read half, half the next day. I just loved it. I read it so much. And then it was so easy to understand the teachings of Jesus for a long time. I used to just recommend that book to people because I was going to a lot of rehabs. I was talking to children in um, lockup and some at camps. Um, I was going all over the place talking and people would ask me because I caught their attention somehow. Like some of them would say, well, we have church people come here all the time. But there's something different. Oh, where, where do you say I should start? So I just be like, I'd always go to the book of James. I'm like, it's easy to understand. It's short. And then, uh, you know, from there, I'd say, you know, start at um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You gotta understand what this comes to. Sometimes you read the end to understand the beginning. Sometimes you read the beginning to understand the end. But I feel that'll make people wonder. It's like, uh, like when they make movies, they put out a trailer, and that's to hook you. Um, not saying that trailers can compare to Jesus Christ and his story, but that's, to me, the trailer of the whole thing. Now, get the history. In some movies, this series goes backwards, you know, so, and you still understand it, and you actually get some insight, and you're like, oh, wow, and it makes you thirsty to realize, ooh, new character, let me see the next one. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that was real, uh, real, a good moment to go through something like that and see that. Hold on. Yes. Some question. Yes. Have soda and comic glasses. Um, you guys ate breakfast. It's before twelve o'clock. How are you gonna have soda? <sighs> Just get a cup of water for now. Okay. Try to at least break the afternoon before you drink and soda. You I tell you this all the time. Oh yeah, take your glasses back. Give me your mother's glasses. <laughs> that she don't even wear no more. She don't even like them. I and I took them. <laughs> but um. But yeah, so um, it's just uh, amazing, and um, I'll watch this again and see. I'm, I'm not even sure what points I made, um, but I love you, brothers and sisters, and God willing, I'll make another video.